The My Booking page within Outlook allows people inside and outside of your organization to schedule appointments with you based on availability that you have defined. This will eliminate so much back and forth when it comes to scheduling appointments and really just streamlining that whole process. Hi, my name's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's nerd out. To navigate to the booking page, we can open up Outlook and then select more apps. From here, we can locate bookings and this will take us to our main booking page where we can manage our personal bookings as well as our shared bookings. For the purpose of this video, we are going to focus just on the personal booking page. To preview our booking page, we can head over to share, select the drop down, and simply select copy link. When we paste that link into a URL, it will bring us to our booking page. And this is what it looks like when somebody goes to schedule a meeting via our booking link. They can select a meeting type, pick a date, as well as a time, and then follow the prompts to complete the booking process. So this gives us an idea of the different customizations that we can set when creating our booking page. To complete the setup of those settings, we can head up to my bookings page. And this page looks a little bit different than the one that we were just on, but that's because it is focusing on your personal booking page so that we can focus on that experience. Let's now go ahead and create a meeting type and further customize the settings. If we select this plus icon, then we can create a new meeting type. At Amy's Animal Shop, we are creating this booking page for virtual dog training sessions. So let's go ahead and give it a title and we will call it one hour virtual dog training, one-to-one -one session, $100. We can also give this meeting type a category similar to email categories or task categories. So let's select this drop down carrot and we can scroll on down to new category. We will call this category the one hour virtual training session. And this is just a great way to color code your meetings for a visual feel. Let's go ahead and click save. Now we can go ahead and add a description. And this is a great way to provide more information to the person that is booking a meeting with you. In our case, we are going to elaborate on the title so that people know that they are booking this session. And then because our sessions are $100, we are also providing some information on how they can receive a full refund in the event that they need to cancel. Next, we can define a location. So you can start to type and search for a physical location. Or as this is a virtual meeting, we have this Teams meeting toggle. So I'm going to leave this toggle on and what this does is as soon as this appointment is made, it is going to automatically create a Teams meeting link for the meeting. Next, we can add a duration for the meeting. So if we select this drop down carrot, then we will see that there are some predefined options here, or you can even add a custom option and define the number of minutes. In our case, I will go ahead and select one hour. Moving along, we have the option for this meeting type to appear on our public booking page or via a specific private booking link. If we select public, then it will appear on our general sharing link along with these default meetings. Alternatively, if we select private, then only those with the link can view it and we will have to provide them with a specific link to this private meeting type, which will bring them to a booking page specifically for that private meeting type. These virtual dog training sessions are one of my most booked sessions, so I will go ahead and keep this as public. Now that we have defined the essentials for this meeting type, we now have the customization settings, and the first one is to use your regular meeting hours or to use custom availability. If we go ahead and select see regular meeting hours, then we are redirected to our Outlook settings, which has our office availability. 
but you may prefer to customize your hours so that you can leave some time aside throughout your day for deep work. By selecting custom availability hours, we can see that there are some additional options that will pop up. And the first option here is this only during the following date range. So if we toggle this on, then we can define a start date as well as an end date that's inclusive for a period that we want to accept these types of meetings. For these virtual dog training sessions, we do typically see an influx in spring and summer. So I'm going to go ahead and define a start date of today and the end date will be September 15th. So we will use this for seasonality and then at the end of September, we will go ahead and adjust the dates for a different winter season availability. And we only want to make this type of booking between 12 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So let's go ahead and delete this availability for Tuesday. We can also adjust our time slots, reflect those times. And if you want to add a split time slot for a specific date, then you can easily just click the plus icon to define those time frames. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this for now. And now we have this availability for Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays between 12 and 5 p.m. Next, we have some advanced options. Let's go ahead and expand those. And we will see here that we can add a buffer time before our meeting, which in my case, I like to have 15 minutes to prepare myself and familiarize myself with the pet before I go into that training session. So let's go ahead and select 15 and we will see how that has now added a buffer of 15 minutes, which will be blocked in our calendar upon meeting. There is also this buffer time for after a meeting, which, you know, sometimes after that hour meeting, I do like to go and grab a glass of water. So I'm going to go ahead and select five minutes. Let's keep this start time interval to 30 minutes. And from our personal booking page, we can see for that training session that these time frame intervals are 30 minutes between them, which is that interval that we just defined. If we go ahead and update that to one hour intervals, then we can see those time slots update to one hour as well. Moving along, the next item is lead time. And so I like to have my bookings in place at a minimum of one day ahead. That gives me time to prepare and plan for my day. And the next item is maximum lead time, which currently 90 days out, that means that people can book three months out, which is quite far away. So let's go ahead and trim that down to 30 days in advance. The final setup is for these email reminders as well as follow-up, allowing us to provide automations before our meeting and after the meeting. So let's go ahead and add an email reminder. I like to send this two hours before the meeting and we can go ahead and add a custom message. If you are enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up as it really helps me out. Let's go ahead and save this email reminder template. And now we can go ahead and save our meeting type. And now that we have defined our own custom meetings, let's go ahead and delete these placeholders as they are irrelevant and I don't want to confuse anybody when they go to my booking page. Now that we have defined our meetings as well as customizations, let's take a look at the booking process when somebody lands on your booking page. When you go to share your booking page with somebody, you can simply select the drop down icon and copy a link or share the link via email, but I personally like to have this included in my email signature settings. Here we are redirected to our email signature settings pane, and there is this little button here that says include a link to my bookings page in my signature. So if we go ahead and click this on, then we can see that this book time to meet with me little hyperlink as well as jazzy logo have popped up there, which will allow people to easily navigate to your booking page. So let's go ahead and save the changes to our email signature settings. When somebody accesses your bookings page and they are not signed in, or they do not have a Microsoft 365 account, 
then they can simply continue as a guest. And I just wanted to note here that people within your organization can also access your booking page by signing into their Microsoft 365 account. From here, they can go ahead and select a meeting type. And from this availability calendar, we can see that there is only that defined availability of Monday, Thursday, and Friday that we defined earlier in the customization settings. From here, we can go ahead and select a time and then follow the prompts to next. From here, they can add their name as well as an email that does not have to be an office type email as well as some notes. And if you haven't already, then please consider giving this video a thumbs up as it really helps my video out. Once they have followed the prompts, they are required to verify their email address. Once they have verified their email, then they will appear on this you are booked page and they can click OK to get to the meeting details where they can reschedule, cancel or create a new meeting. They will also receive an email that includes that Teams meeting link, as well as if they do want to manage that meeting, then they can follow this manage meeting link from within this email confirmation which will bring them back to this pane where they can once again reschedule, cancel, or create a new. When somebody books a meeting with you through your booking page, then you will see an email confirmation like this come through to your inbox. You will also see the meeting automatically added into your Outlook calendar. And if we double click on this event, then we can see that there is that join the meeting now. So this is that Microsoft Teams meeting link that has automatically been generated. And if you need to cancel any of these meetings, then you can go to the manage meeting link and simply select cancel meeting. Look for a confirmation email message shortly. So let's go ahead and now take a look and see what that looks like. In your Outlook inbox, you will receive this canceled booking confirmation. And they will also receive a cancellation notice for that meeting. There are some additional settings that I wanted to show you before we wrap up. So you can, from your booking page, head to the ellipses and then select edit banner image. From here, you can select a nice image and you will see that that can update in this banner at the top of your booking page. And last but not least, you can select the ellipses and if you need to turn off your booking page for any reason, then you can simply Select this option here and that will turn off your bookings page, preventing anybody from making a booking through your booking site. And if you are interested in learning about other great tips to take control of your Outlook calendar, then I've included another video linked here.